Now it has been time to talk about layouts in .NET MAUI, so tune in! Hi and welcome to another video about .NET MAUI. In this video we'll cover layouts, the basic components that you use when you want to structure your content in the apps. So we will cover stack layout including vertical and horizontal stack layout, grid, flex layout and bindable layout. So what should we do now? We should go to Visual Studio, our tool that we use when we building .NET MAUI apps. Okay, here I have created a demo app just from the template. I have also added some view models that we will use later when we are going through bindable layout. But for now we can start just with editing the SAML. So the most common layout is probably stack layout. If you have done Windows development Stack layout is very similar to stack panel, but with a different name. And with .NET MAUI, we also got a vertical stack layout and horizontal stack layout. They are basically the same as a stack layout, but you don't have to set orientation to either horizontal or vertical. For performance reason, I recommend you to use vertical stack layout or horizontal stack layout, but I will show you all of them today. So we can start with the regular stack layout that you also had in Xamarin Forms. Stack layout. And here, as the name says, we can stack content. If we add items to it, it will stack them vertically by default. To make that be in a horizontal direction, we need to set orientation to horizontal. So we can add a label. Text. Hello. Then we can add another label, text world, like this. And now we can see that we have two items in a vertical row. If you want to change the orientation, we just go here to, to stack layout and then we set orientation to horizontal. And now you can see that they are in the, in the other direction. But this doesn't look that good because they are without space between, so we can go here to the stack layout and we can set spacing, like say 10 to make it obvious. And now we have space between them. If you want to use the more performance stack layout, we can change here to vertical stack layout first. And we can see that we have the same behavior as we're setting orientation to vertical or just leaving it because of, on stack layout, vertical is the default value, so you don't, you don't have to set that. But we can also change to hor horizontal stack layout, and they are added in a horizontal way. So, that is stack layout. It's not more, co more complicated than that. So, let's go to grid, one of the, my other favorite controls. And in many cases, I recommend you to use grid over stack layout, because grid is much more performant. Because when the UI are renders, if you use grid, it don't have to do that much of calculations, so that is a recommendation. But if you have a few items in a stack layout, that is often okay. So we can remove this and instead create a grid. With grid, you need to define uh, columns and row definitions, so you can do that either by doing this dot row definitions and add. A row definition and a row definition can be in absolute value like 200 or you can use a star to cover all available area like this so now the second row will be 200 and the first row will be the rest of the space but you can also do auto even if that is not recommended because that will be a lot of calculations then then you can use stack layout instead if you want to but it is possible to use outdoor and can be usable in some cases. And we can do the same with the column definitions, just like this. But you have to set width instead. So the 
There are also another way that is less verbose. So we can remove this and we can just write uh, row definitions star two star. This means that we'll have a relative height of it. So this will be one third of the available space and this will be two thirds of it. And we can do the same with column definitions. We can have two, but they can be in the same size like this. So now we can start to add content to them. So let's say we can have a box view, color red, just to make it clear where we have our columns and rows. So to place it in a row, we can add a grid dot row is zero, but this will be the default value. So if you don't want to, you don't have to set a zero, zero value, but it's more clear, I think right now. So we can create another one. We can have it in grid row one and in column one, yellow, another one in row one, but in column one, and then a last one in row one and column no zero. So let's change colors to green and blue. So now we we'll almost have like a flag here, but if we want to add some space between the columns and rows, we can also do that. We can go here and set column spacing to 10 and let's say row spacing to 20. And now you can see that we have added spaces here. Okay, another layout that we can use is absolute layout. And that makes it possible to tell where the item should be in a component. So we can remove this and change to an absolute layout. And then we don't need this grid definitions is enough with two right now. So then instead we go and say absolute layout dot layout bounds like uh, 50, 100, 30, 80. And then we have placed our box view on that position. And the layout bound is always relative to the component that they are inside of. So if we add a grid with the row definitions like star star and then we place the, it in the second row the row within this one we we can now see that we moved it down because it's relative from the start of the absolute layout okay so let's go and cover the next layout flex layout if you have done web development with css you have probably used Flexbox. Flex layout is a flex box, but for .NET MAUI. And to the flex layout, we can add some box views. This is how this will look by default without setting any properties to the flex layout. But we can, for example, add a wrap and set it to wrap. And then it will wrap when there are no available space. So now they will have the correct size instead of as you saw before, that was uh, not the case. So we can also set justify content, for example, to space between. Space between means that we have space between them and not around them. As you can see here, we not have it in the start of the flex layout, just between the items here. Uh, if we want to have it also in the start, we can set space around. like this, then we will have an equal space there. We can also set, set to be in center or in start or in end. Or also the last option here is space evenly, like this. 
is a lot of properties that you can play around with when it comes to flex layout. What the properties that I have shown is the one that I use the most when I use flex layout. So the last thing I want to show in this video is bindable layout. If you want to use the layouts with a collection of data, but you don't want to use a carousel view or a collection view, maybe because it's just a few rows or that you want to use it inside of a collection view because you don't want to have uh, nested collection views. So if you want to do that, we can, for example, use a stack layout, a vertical stack layout. Then we can go here and say bindable layout dot item source is binding dot cars because in the view model that I already created here, I have a property that is named cars and it's an observer collection of strings with just car models. So we can do that. And when we have a binding to a data collection, we also need to specify a data template. So we do that like saying bindable layout dot item template. And we add a data template to it and we can have content view for example so we can have some padding then and inside of it we can add a label and a binding to the string that it contains so now we have all the data uh, stacked here without having to add them manually so this is how you can easily add data bindings to your layouts if you want to. You can use this with grid too, and you can use it with flex layout uh, and also with absolute layout if you want that. But I often use it with either flex layout or with stack layout because I think that is where it is most useful. Thank you for watching this video about layouts in .NET MAUI. I promise you there will be more videos about .NET MAUI just basic videos and also with some more advanced stuff. If you want me to cover a specific topic, go to my Twitter and write to me and I will do my best to cover all your wishes. So like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new content that will be out every week. See you next time. Bye bye.